Before we begin, I'd like to calm everyone down by saying that I have never seen a single Minions film. With that out of the way, let's look at the biggest small baddies Bionicle has ever seen. These are the Top 10 Minions. Starting our list at number 10 is a manufactured minion, the Rahi Nui. Made from several different creatures such as the Nui Rama and Nui Jaga, this beast was created by Makuta Teradax himself. A fearsome creation. The Rahi dealt a massive blow to the Toa Metru at one point, and nearly defeated the powerless Toa Nuva soon after. It held great power, being able to use all eight of the standard Kanoka powers, as well as absorb elemental energy. Were it not for Vakama and Nuju that first instance, it may have been able to defeat two of the greatest Toa teams known to the Matoran universe. At number 9, we have the Paraka. Individually, they have all had some semblance of working for someone at one point or another. However, the reason they make the list is for the actions they took while under the influence of Makuta Teradax. While attempting to raid one of his lairs, they stumbled across his broken body. The Makuta, still being present, influenced them with the idea of obtaining the Mask of Life. He would continue to use them as pawns throughout the duration of their stay on Voyanui. If it wasn't for them, Teradax may not have been able to go through with the rest of his plan. Coming in at number 8, we have Takadox. While the League of Six Kingdoms was at the height of its power, Takadox brokered a deal with the Brotherhood of Makuta in exchange for a pardon. This resulted in the fall of the League. For nearly 100,000 years, he held out hope that he would eventually receive his pardon for being an ally of the Brotherhood, but when the time eventually came, he was not granted it. For being a minion to Makuta Teradax for so long, and for helping overthrow one of the greatest military mites of the Matoran universe, he makes this list. Next on the list, at number 7, the Borak were a great destructive force, and not one to be messed with. While they were allies of Mat Nui, due to their function being that of clearing the island of the same name, they were temporarily used by Teradax to buy him time after his defeat at the hands of the Toa Mata. They nearly overwhelmed the Toa and destroyed the island while they lived there. While not inherently evil, they were certainly built to be minions. At number 6, the mighty Brutaka was an incredible force to be reckoned with. His sheer, raw power allowed him to turn the tide in many battles, as shown when he defeated the Toa Nuva and Voya Nui resistance team in a single blow. Strengthened by Antidermis, he was often a servant to evil, such was the case when he allied himself with the Paraka. While he eventually became good again, he was still known for the evil acts he committed in an attempt to gain more power. Halfway through at number 5, the Rakshi have been an ever-present force in the Matoran universe. While there are such things as wild Rakshi, they're best known as the minions of the Makuta. They were responsible for the takeover of several islands, the destruction of Takoro, and as enforcers of the law during Teradax's reign of the Matoran universe. Uncaring, emotionless machines, the Rakshi were some of the greatest minions we have ever seen. At number 4 is Rudaka. A known affiliate of both the Brotherhood of Makuta and the Dark Hunters, she commonly helped both organizations despite them being at war with each other. With the Dark Hunters, she aided in the creation of several of their members, most notably the creation of Nidiki. Meanwhile, she was also affiliated with the Makuta. Her most well-known act was during the second battle for Metronui, as she was greatly responsible for releasing Makuta Teradax once again from his prison. She was later used as a minion by the Order of Matanui to accomplish tasks they didn't wish to waste their members on. She is certainly one of the most well-known minions of all time. Coming in at number 3, Akmu was the first non-Rahi minion ever featured in Bionicle. While his Matoran pod was lost at sea during the Toa Metru's travels to Matanui, he was indoctrinated by Teradax. Since then, he aided in his plans, although in minor ways. He helped infect the village of Pokoro until Pohatu and Takua put a stop to it, and he was always loyal to the Makuta. And that was rewarded when Teradax took over the universe and made him the Turaga of Metronui. He used his newfound power to form his own dictatorship, but was eventually overthrown once Teradax was killed. At number 2, the Brotherhood of Makuta. In a way, every member was a minion to Makuta Teradax. They were constantly used as pawns in his plans, especially toward the end. 
During the awakening of Matanui, it was only realized shortly before their deaths that the Makuta and Cardanui were ordered there by Pterodax, specifically to die. Pterodax used all of them to achieve his plans and simultaneously get rid of any competition to the throne. Despite their great power, they were still minions to him. And now, at number one, the Toa Nuva. Now, I know what you might be thinking. The Nuva? What? Oh, well I see. Maybe they were minions to Mat Nui. Well, no. They were Pterodax's greatest minions ever. Sure, Liwa was controlled by an infected mask once, but that was only the most obvious time they had been used aside from during their greatest defeat. The Toa Nuva were instrumental in awakening Mat Nui. It was their destiny. Pterodax used them in order to awaken the Matoran universe and complete his plan. Every step of the way, he intended for them to complete their destiny and aid him in his conquest. And the entire time, they were absolutely clueless. The Toa Nuva were the strongest minions we have ever seen in Bionicle. But those are just our thoughts. What are yours? Post your own top 10 Bionicle minions in the comments below and feel free to content and feel free to continue the discussion on the TTV message boards at board.ttvpodcast.com. I'm LJ, and thanks for watching.